Stern does this. You know, he put a shoulder, a little, little small pad uh -huh. under the, <laughs> under the, yeah. Because I have uh, a very long neck, so I have. Right, right. Some... I see that. Right.
Fantastic, beautiful part. It's very nice to hear you uh, play for the class today. And it's kind of early, 8.30, you're already like playing like one of the hardest piece in our repertoire. That's wonderful. I usually like to start with the class by asking a few questions. First, can you hear me okay? Yes. Very nice part. And secondly, is it possible to turn your um, upper body this way a little bit because I have a hard time to see exactly that will be much better than I can see how your bow works and all that stuff. Great. Uh, Just stay like okay. this. You can move your stand or something. Yeah. Um, actually, I, I do have uh, another camera. Do you see me only one? Because uh, I, I open. Oh, yes. like I, I see. I see. So maybe I can pin that camera, right? Wait a second. I, yes. Yes. Okay. Now I see it. Now I see it. That's better. That's much better. That's I, great. I didn't, I didn't mention you earlier. <laughs> right, right, right. Okay. Now I can see it very, very nicely. I can even see your computer screen and all that stuff. That's nice. Um, so uh, I would love to ask a question. Can you tell me a little bit of Eugene Izai? You know, any any information of what is this piece or what are the whole? You know, he wrote six of them, right? Uh huh. Number four. Just tell us a little bit. Maybe just the rest of the class might not know who Eugene Izai is. He's like really from uh, the turn he, of the century. Yeah. He is. Uh, so uh, this six sonata is um, for sure um, uh, inspired him by Bach because like Bach wrote also like six solo violin sonata, and this mm -hmm. one number four he dedicated to Fritz Kreisler. Mm -hmm. And uh, I would say that uh, if if I could play the the, the third movement, uh, it sound so so Chrysler. This one is a little bit um, not so Chrysler, but um, some right. some passage and some harmonies is like um, is but we we can remind like what we hear to to Chrysler and uh, right. his his techniques. From his side, he he likes to um, write some, like, like like Bach. He he always um, brings like harmonies, mm -hmm. which is quite uh, uh, advanced, more advanced than, mm -hmm. than Bach, and mm -hmm. everything is like built from the harmony. And he also likes to use like um, some chromatic approach and mm -hmm. many um uh advanced technique for the violinist to 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 play like he put it on the on his right. um right what, yeah what do you said is everything is so correct and I, i'm looking at the last moment you know reminds me this uh, you know the uh, preludo and allegro you know just like even just by writing it looks like although it's in a much com much more complex meter it's five four but that is maybe in three four you know but everything so i want to um in addition to what you mentioned is he did indeed he wrote all six sonatas in the later part of his life he's no longer concertizing actively and then he wrote all six of them for his junior colleagues Actually, he was inspired by one of his junior colleagues. His name is Joseph Sigetti, which he wrote the first sonata for. Joseph Sigetti is really a big advocate and big champion of solo Bach's work. So he was so inspired by him. And then he started to write the first sonata, then continuing on with second for Jacques Thibault and third for Georges Onescu. And this one is for Fritz Kreisler. Now, one more question, and I will, I will, I will give you my, my, um, my, um, criticism or suggestions. So can you tell me a little bit? For me, he writes every single um, uh, sonata for particular, this junior colleague of him. And also he has his, his junior colleague's style and sound in mind. So if are you familiar, by any chance, familiar with how Chrysler play? Have you ever heard Chrysler play the violin? Um, I, I heard him once. Uh, he played... Uh, I listened to him play the, I'm not sure it's uh, the Greek sonata with Rachmaninoff. That's only great. That one, only that one? Yeah. That I, yeah. I listened to him like, like his playing. And yes. after, apart from that, I'm, I'm not sure who is like 
is Chrysler playing or, or someone else is playing? Sure, sure. So if you heard it, do you still have a recollection of how he plays, how he how Chrysler plays? If you give a little a few adjectives, what Chrysler styles is so different um, from his sound what is, is his... more um I would say like old school, like always uh -huh. uh, have a big and fast uh, rebuttal and always uh -huh. connected every note and uh -huh. his sound uh -huh. is quite um I would say that uh, it's uh, intense almost all the time. Yeah, great, excellent, then, excellent. I, I'm glad you are mentioning some some key features of Chrysler. Chrysler for me is ultimate kind of old timers. You know, even Heifetz admire Chrysler. Chrysler plays with such an elegant sound. He's this Viennese uh, aristocratic. You know, it's very high class and everything. When you mentioned that recording, you know. Mm -hmm. You know, such a beautiful, you know, every single note have full of meaning, you know, and the vibrato, the bow control, everything is so elegant, so first class. Good. So now back to the sonata itself. It really follows this called Baroque dance form, you know. So if you think about Bach's second partita, which the first movement is also, I'm, I'm not sure if you're familiar with right that is also a lament right mm -hmm. so look this title of that is also alamand do you know what alamand is about um some some of um slow dance piece slow dance usually is in four four time or uh -huh. four eight this uh -huh. okay good now now i'm seeing lento my so 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 when you are playing i muted myself and checked the metronome you know what do, do, do you do you know your your tempo related do you have this edition by any by any chance do you happen to have uh, this yes, one or I, I have. Okay. You, have the, you have the same edition i i have another fancy edition um uh, it's a handy edition but i grew up with this edition i just purchased that but uh, 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 all... now now i'm using the handy uh, edition but but, yeah. but that one i also have like in my tablet in your tablet okay great so um is your indication the tempo indication is yeah. is 72 72 equals a uh 16th notes right uh-huh yes okay very good so can you do you happen to have a metronome on your end um if you uh, don't i can yes 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 i i have it you have it okay Yeah, can you try a little bit of this, please, with the metronome? And also, you know, do you, do you have a little square look like this? It said B dot B. Uh huh. Yes. What does that mean? Uh, play the whole like more marble. Is Are you sure? The, is that the <laughs> indication? I'm not sure. You. <laughs> it's not play the whole ball. Okay. It tells you very rhythmic. Uh where where what what are you uh which place are you talking? The very beginning. Here, take a look. Ah, ah okay, okay. Uh yes, uh, I have a uh, bien rhythmic, so it's like a uh, very right. rhythmic, right? Very rhythmic. Uh -huh. Okay, can you make sure you're very rhythmic? What I want to say is um he writes this um, movement almost like a rhapsodic way, but actually everything was written out. You know, it reminds me, you know, a slightly different subject, like Gustav Mahler. He writes every measure with either different tempo or some sort of German term indicates, you know, this, you have to do this, you know, Langson goes slower. But this piece, if you play absolutely straight, it still sounds pretty free. Does this make sense? Right now, I feel the freedom is a little bit too much. You know, if we can try a little bit more straight approach, that will be really do the piece justice better. Yeah? Can we try it? Beginning.
Bye. Okay. I already, yes, a part. I like it very much. So I am wondering, what's your view of this particular movement? Okay. He is a turn of the century, end of 19th century and beginning of a 20th century person is trying to pay homage to a Baroque dance form, trying to pay homage to Johann Sebastian Bach. So I am wondering, do we really need to press so hard, especially if you think Chrysler, the sound of Chrysler is so honey toned, so sweet. May I suggest a little less pressure? I just hear a little bit choking of each note, uh, maybe a little less. Can we try that one more time, please? Okay, good, very nice, very nice. I liked it already much better. Watch out your intonations are quite difficult and a lot of screen crossing and all that stuff. Now, can you tell me your principle about vibrato? Currently, I am hearing this one, a lot of vibrato. Then no vibrato. A lot of vibrato, no vibrato, <laughs> you know. Is that because they're too short for you to vibrate? Um, you mean uh, this one? I I mean all the short notes. Can you keep uh, your hand uh, relaxed? I think maybe because uh, at the first time I, I I played the triplets so fast, like uh -huh. so so I didn't have time to. Right. Run, but but sure. time so to may I suggest? Yeah. May I suggest? Um not vibrate like crazy, but the vibrato is helping your left hand to stay loose. Does this make sense? So more. And of course, the way you bring out the voice is nice. Your your ear should hear do di do di do di do do di de. Let me hear the, the um, uh, uh, counter counterpoint. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Try it again. Please. Part very nice. Okay, very very difficult passage. You you executed very very well. Wonderful. But I occasionally hear the string crossing sounds a bit uneven to me. Uh -huh. So I understand you want to do a little bit rubato, especially later on when you have allegando and also then next line you have guitar. But occasionally I hear da 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 da. You know what I mean? If you can do di da di da di da di da di. Can you do it one more time, a little slower, and really pay attention about how even that can be distributed? Yeah. much better i am observing i'm like trying to look very carefully with your arm if you can see my hand i am wondering if you can relax this even more can you look at me can you hold hold your uh, bow with your left hand just like me hold your bow with left hand just like me don't touch the hair yes and can you do this 
your right hand? Exactly. Look how relaxed you are. Can you make sure whenever you do the string crossing, even it's forte, but it's still very. I call it instant noodle string crossing. <laughs> you know, can you just try it with the open string? Probably I will set my angle a slightly higher. Right now, your elbow is kind of on the E string, maybe in between D and A string, maybe somewhere here. So here you're going to the neighbor, and then this is G. You see what I'm saying? Right now, it's a little too low. So can we try one more time? Right, right, better, better. Can you try that passage one more time with a little more uh, flowing tempo and, and pay attention about how your screen crossing is? It gets better every single time. I don't know how, how, how you feel about it. One last thing I'm noticing. Well, seems like you're, I have the same problem. My arm is pretty long. So I tend to do this. Look at my, look at my bow hair. You tend to tilt your bow a bit. Is it possible because it's rather powerful, a lot of string crossing. You want the, uh, the bite, the grab of the string, but without pressing. Now, Go listen to Chrysler again at some point, you know, either his, his very famous Beethoven concerto because he wrote the cadenza, right? And all these small pieces, you know. You know, such elegance. He never chokes the sound, even the loudest, okay? Just remember that. Remember, have his sound in your ear. I'm not saying you should emulate or imitate the way he plays but that's the piece taylor made for this particular virtuoso you know and the older timer you know we are now because we have a demand we are playing as a soloist in a much bigger hall before it was always kama music is chamber music is more in domestic situation now is the hall is three thousand people four thousand people well a pandemic can do it cannot do any of those so anyway so uh, uh tilt your hair a bit this way no, don't do this. Okay, good. Let's go on. Let's do. Okay. Already two things I would like to bring to your attention. Sometimes, um, I don't know, it's influenced by the recording or it's just when you are reading the score, I will suggest you to read a little bit more carefully. Look, the second beat of the 3-8, there is this accent on the second note, right? Okay, but doesn't have a, watch out, doesn't have a dot on them, right? Ah, uh, yes. You know what I mean? So when you do this, I will, no, which is very oftenly done, oftenly done on the recording even. I never understand. That's not what he wrote. You know, he's a very, very smart guy. He's a very good violinist. If he wants you to lift the bow, he will write it for you, okay? He, he's not like one of dumb composer. And here, uh, I won't do, that's kind of a, it's a bad mannerism because you're so excited about the chord, you sacrifice the tail of the phrase. Mm -hmm. I will not do that either because I think it's a... <laughs> it's very powerful if you can hold your horse. Dee, da, da, dee, dee, re. Yes? Can you pay attention about those two things? And yeah, every single time... <laughs> Thank you. 
it's much harder instead uh -huh. of lifting the ball. It's much harder. You you will you try it, then you'll know. It's much harder to do it what he wrote. Pretty good. Now, I like the way you do the chords. You first speak the lower one. I will do the same thing, but whenever you have this, if you, probably the top note is a little sustained, a little too long. I will come back a little sooner. Otherwise, you're taking the beat. The measure stretched instead of three, three beats, three, eight, it becomes three and a half and eight, you know, be careful with that. Um, can you make sure you're finding a better balance between your vertical pressure and the horizontal speed? I feel most of the time you are pressing harder than it needed don't worry i can hear you i can hear you very well i i, I totally understand it's not the concert setting you are probably in your living room or in your bedroom i see a, maybe a bed behind you that's all good i'm not in a concert hall either i'm not in carnegie hall teaching you so maybe from my end it sounds terrible as well too that's no problem but you never want to beat the instrument you want to have the again the elegance the, the piece is very distant to your ear, but it's meanwhile, it's very, very baroque, baroquely or classically written. You always remember that. It, he is trying to present the older uh, tradition. You understand? Although this is with, covered with modern technique and modern harmony and everything, but you don't want this sound like um, Bartok a second violin concerto, you know? You still want to sound a little bit, have an old soul to it. Whenever you have... I probably will... That one I will emphasize a little. Da -da -da. Can we try this very last line one last time? Very nice. Um, uh, uh, sorry, I have to stop very soon. If you have a last minute question, I just want to offer one last comment here. There is a combination of single dots and double dots. You want to be extremely careful how you present that, okay? Previous line is even more so because previous line, the last measure, the second beat is a single dot. Da, uh, uh. D, da, uh, uh, D, da. And this measure, da, uh, uh, D, da, da, uh, uh, da, 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 You better be careful, okay? Because sometimes I have a hard, hard time. So single dot sounds a little too short. Mm -hmm. The double dotted note sounds a little bit too long. So the last note sounds compressed. Sounds da, 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 da. You don't want that sounds agitated, yeah? Okay, part, it's wonderful, you know, again, considering 830, you know, I won't be able to play half as good as you, half as well as you are. 830, I'll be like so like sleepy and not yet had my morning coffee yet, you know, all that. Anyway, do you have a question or um, anything, any concerns? Uh, for, for now, I think I'm good and I know quite a lot how to improve my playing from from, from your teaching. So sure. 
I cool. think. I would love to tell you that um, I actually, uh, I'm a huge collector of recordings. I actually have Christ, you should listen to how Isai plays. He didn't record all the sonatas, but he recorded like a 13 small tracks, small things back to 1930. This is one recording. They are all the same, but three different company. I just like his recording so much. So I got like three different copy. Ah. I'm pretty sure you can, you can, you will have free access online from like YouTube or some just type in like Eugene Izai and see what you found. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Very good. Excellent. You're so welcome. Best luck. Thank you. Thank you very much, Pat. Uh, so our next student is uh, on. She's a first year student. Uh, she's going to play Presto from Bach G minor for Sonata. That's great. Yes. And um, uh, Jay, uh, your yeah. university undergrad, right? Do you have master's? We, we do have master's degree program and also doctorate program too. That's wonderful. Excellent. Okay, uh, on your loom pop and original sound, Rina. I mean, I need to be on the original sound. Okay, uh, original sound, young, my young, see, high. One second, I'm, I'm asking her to adjust the sound setting Hello. Hello. Hi, Hi. So, I mean, I mean, okay, okay. Okay, okay. Hello, okay, so I can start now, right? Right. Uh, make sure, yes, your head is outside of the screen. <laughs> so come, come, come a little, just a little closer. That's perfect. That's perfect. Okay. Thank you. 
Beautiful. Um, that's wonderful. I enjoy your playing very, very much. Uh, are you currently studying the whole sonata or just this particular movement? Just this piece. Just, oh, just this very, just this movement. Yes. Okay. Excellent. Great. Uh, I will recommend eventually maybe try to get it memorized as well. That would be nice. Okay. Good. Um, tell us. Um, What's the particular challenge of Bach's music for play on the violin? Do you feel any anything difficult about Bach's music? I think about my bow. I cannot use my elbow well, and it's so flat, and it's um, and also the crossing string. So it is quite a challenge for me too. Sure, sure, wonderful. Yeah, that, these are the uh, these are the problems or or concerns I will address. And also, I think it's very very important for uh, your ear always guide the intonation because since it's so fast when it's said presto, and uh, basically the first, for example, the very first four measures they are you're basically just playing a G minor chord, right? So. So that has to be belong to the same, they're siblings, they belongs to the same family, the family called G minor triad. So you have to be very, very careful with pitch. Yes? Okay. Now, let's first work on the right hand a little bit. Can you do this with me by finding where, so in the middle, you're finding between the G string and the D string, that's where your angle belongs. Then you just do this. Let's play eight times down bow, then eight times up bow. Yeah. Do two things. First, lower your wrist a little bit. Hold it kind of parallel to where your uh, fingertip is. Right now, it's more like this because, again, the same problem as Pat uh, before. If you can do part before, if you can do this, you will have all the hair, all the weight to help you. If you tilt your hair and you say it's not loud enough, then you press a lot. You know, try not to press. Try to have all the hair to help you by lowering the wrist a little bit. And second is, I want to make sure your pinky, which is this finger, is completely flexible. So uh, your, this, your, your, uh, uh, your distance among fingers is excellent. But right now, you have a hard time to really make this motion going. Exactly. Beautiful. Very nice. Yes. Can you make sure whenever you play the down bow, can you pull the bow, pull from the um, pinky, and when you do up bow, you push, pull and push. So when you have, especially down bow, I would like you to have this. And, and make sure this is rela more relaxed. Remember what I did with uh, part? So make sure this, yeah, exactly. Like a little, um, like a little bird's wing is shivering or a fish's fin is moving when the fish is swimming in the pond or in a fish tank. So can you, can you do this again, GD, GD? And more relaxed, yes. And breathe out, exhale when you do down bow and inhale um, when you do up bow. Yeah, 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 yes, good. Hold down, yeah. Uh -huh. Actually, those two strings are not that far from each other. Look, I, I'm so lazy. <laughs> I'm, I only, almost only move my wrist. I used to, well, it's harder to see here. I used to make my student, if it's armchair, I let them put the elbow there. I only use the wrist because right now 
you are using big muscle to do small things, you don't need to. If this is there, just... Can you see the motion? Yes. Yes? Yeah. Okay, that's very nice. So um, I just want to make sure um, this is super flexible. Can we try a different version? Can we try GD, GD, AD, AD? Can we do? Yes. Um, the D string is your home. The G string is you come to your teacher for your violin lesson, you travel to the university or wherever. The A string is probably your neighborhood. You go there to play games or watching TV together. But this is your pivot. These are the three strings you're playing. This is where your home base is. That's where you set your angle. So you go there. It's just neighboring. Right now, you are really wholeheartedly shift, shift to there and shift to here. That's too much. If you can stay right here, D string, and then look, this is G, this is A. Does this make sense? Right now, I'm seeing your elbow goes too much movement. If you can. Yes. Can we try it again? Let's do the uh, wrist here. Yeah, a little bit more wrist, less elbow. Move all the movement to minimize your effort to the kind of fingertip here, very loose, and then do it. Okay, mm -hmm. let's do D A D A E A E A. Very nice. Do some of those exercises. Right now, sounds a bit uneven. Occasionally, I hear, you know, it's not completely, um, completely um, even. If you can, can we do the very last one? Let's do G D A E. Completely relaxed. Exhale when you do down bow, inhale when you do up bow. Okay. Let's come to the tip of the bow and tilt your bow this way. Right now you're using half of the hair. Just look, uh, I used to joke with my younger students you know this is the hair is vanilla and the stick is kind of a, a chocolate Choc chocolate vanilla ice cream you want to see the chocolate too you know not just the vanilla if you only see the vanilla your, your sound is so small you want to make sure you see the chocolate you know yeah not not this you don't lower yes can we try again Yeah, elbow too high. That's, the shoulder should never, don't shrug your shoulder, drop. Getting better, getting better each time. Okay, good. Now, let's do it a little slower. Play, um, play to the first repeat. That probably is enough. Watch out your intonation and see if you can uh, apply something I told you. A little bit more hair by lower, lower, lowering the wrist and, um, and stay loose here, okay? I think it's pressed too hard. I, I hear... 
you cannot do that. If you can, you don't want to kill the resonance. If you press too hard, it's no longer what the violin can speak. Just like if you are holding your hand at your neck, you are choking the sound. You don't want to choke the sound ever. You just want to set it free. Yes. Yeah, a little bit lower wrist. Now you are I'm seeing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Can we stop for a second? Now let's talk about left hand. Here. slow like this just tune it i want to make sure the first four measures you are basically just playing three notes g b flat and d then one octave higher is also these three notes so entire first four measures you are only have three notes agreed mm -hmm. it's descending arpeggios so the notes this g has to match this one and Perfect fourth and major six. Do you practice scales daily? Yes. Do you practice scales daily? Um, not daily, but just for someday. Oh, okay. I will first recommend you have a religious disciplined way with scales okay that's probably the quickest shortcut for good technique good intonation good form and it's so good for you just like workout you wake up early and then do you know i just, well now it's a little bit difficult because i have my daughter so um otherwise i, I would do like no less than an hour you know uh, you are a performance major right uh on that's right. Okay, so I assume you devote yourself like a three hours or even four hours a day to practice this. This is what you want to do in your life. So I probably will use one hour of your precious practice time to spend that with scales because scales will teach you so much. Look, scales teach you screen crossing, intonation, evenness, sound, shifting, everything. <laughs> You know what I mean? Start with some easy ones, maybe car flash or maybe single strings, maybe no key signature from the open string. Every week, get a new key, eventually add thirds, six, with octave, fingering octave and tens because you need them. You know, the double stops. Look, right now here, it's actually all. There's a lot of thirds, a lot of fours, a lot of six, right? All of them. Can you imagine? Would that be so great if you have all the technique aspect taken care of? You only need to deal with is bring the spirit, bring the musicality of Johann Sebastian Bach. Instead of you struggling with technique shortage or technique uncertainty. You understand what I'm saying? Yes? Huh? Okay, great. Let's try one more time, a little slower, with more tone, but not pressed. Don't press with a little more bow and more hair. It's very hard to demonstrate because my table is right in front of me. Let me back up a little bit. Uh, 
Okay, hear the D G minor. Your inner ear has to go with the G minor. You know, you have to hear every single note before you play. First section is really good. Now, when you get that note is a little sour, that note is a little flat. Can you tell? Yes. Okay. So, um, okay. My question for you is: Do you practice slowly? Um, I practice slowly, but not just just for some time, like not. Okay. Right. I want to make sure you pay, um. Be a little more strict to yourself as intonation is concerned. Violinists, string players, we all, all of us, because we are human, we make mistakes. We play notes out of tune, but you have to make sure it's under a certain percentage, right? If, let's say, every three notes you have one note out of tune, then people start to wonder, is she or he paid enough attention about this matter because we all let's say i play like 300 notes i miss one then proves i'm a human <laughs> you understand because we're not machine we're not god you know we make mistakes because well just your hand slips or just you haven't uh, touched the string the right way the pressure is wrong or just slides or the, there's a little rattling from the string or something like that. The string, the string is forced, things like that. But I want to make sure overall, uh, you want to have a much higher level of intonation, okay? Do you listen to other people play, like either on YouTube or actual recording? I am so old fashioned. I have all the physical format. This is CD, then I have LP, I have old recording. Do you listen to people who you like? Um. I actually like um I'm I'm searching on YouTube. I search for the song and it's I just like random to play. I I mostly like uh look at the view, which one I got the most view. I I watch that one, something like that. Okay, uh, it can be dangerous because you don't know who is viewing them, right? Okay. <laughs> Somebody just just looking attractive or very hot or things like that. Maybe you want to do a little digging and do a little research and find out who is playing Bach, have some sort of authority. Let's say Henrik Schering. Probably I just throw a few old names. Arthur Grumio or Nathan Mirstein. These are the three people who I highly recommend. You, you can ask your teacher. Your teacher knows a lot about those guys, you know. Um, so I just want to be careful because maybe maybe somebody play really badly, but she looks very attractive and have a lot of hits. Many people view them because that doesn't mean she's a better player. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah? Okay, good. Very nice. Um, Let's try a little bit from, uh, let's do this. Let's do the chord. Let's start from here. Let's try that one. Good. So you do as it comes. Can you make sure you press the string down from a little bit closer to the fingerboard. Tell you what, because over there is not as angular as the bridge. You understand? It's flatter angle. If you can play these three notes together, more together, let it sound together. And also left hand, if you vibrate, let it blossom. Right now the sound is choked. So like, <laughs> then you stop the ball. Don't stop the ball. <laughs> Did you hear my violin response better? Did you hear? It, it has a little echo. 
Now it's even better, sorry, because my 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 end of the bow just hit on the table before. <laughs> yes? Did you hear that? Yeah, even through Zoom, hopefully you can hear what I'm hearing me. You know, I'm not trying to say I'm much better here. Just I want you to get the sound right. Can we try that? Okay, wait. Just yeah. Just do the bottom two notes. And vibrate. Yes. Can you tune that chord? It's a minor seventh. Make sure it's in tune. Yes. Good. Yes. And after you lift the bow, still keep the vibrato going for a little bit. Yes. Can we do the top two? It's a tritone or augmented force. This is the top two notes. Let's not vibrate and play in tune. First play in tune. Yes, good. Now vibrate. Yes, now do the three notes together. Vibrate. Very nice. Now let's do. Do the notes before down bow. Yes. Make sure you have ample time to prepare for the chord. Okay. Somehow I feel it's unprepared. Make sure your left hand set up one fraction sooner than your right hand. If not, you're going to choke the sound or the force pitch or that funny stuff. Prepare. Take all the time you want. Yes. Okay. So that's one of the hard spot because your hand has to flip, right? And the, the next one, how you finger it? Do you play on the second position or first position? It's the next chord. Show me the next chord. On oh, the next chord. Oh, second. Yeah. Okay. Okay. It, it's not very in tune. Let's do. Let's do this. Place all the fingers, only make one note sound. So I have all three notes, but I play only this. Can we do that? Place all the fingers on the three notes, but only draw the bow for the up bow, up, up bow. No, first, first note up bow. Very nice. Still play, place all the fingers, play the middle note. You hear the F sharp out of tune? Okay. Up ball. Okay, still out of tune. Okay, the top note. Yes, okay, sorry, we're running out of time. I have to move on to the next student. I think those are the details you want to pay a lot of attention when it's vertically have so many notes, you know, I will take them apart. You know, deal with the right hand problems separate from the left hand problem. I will do. Make sure the sound is right. And then. Then. And. Then. You know, every step has to be a lot of care, even love, dedication, you know, because the composer take them a long time to really write those notes. You know, it's craftsmanship. 
we take the trouble to really learn the right one because if it's out of tune, it's almost like telling a lie. You understand what I'm saying? Okay, good. Um, it's so nice to hear you play Bach, who's like the most important, the most in inspiring composers. Do you have any questions for me? No, I didn't have. Maybe I need to practice more. <laughs> First, we all need to practice. I need to practice more. How about that? Excellent. Great. Nice to hear you. Thank you. Beautiful. Yeah. Thank you very much. And our, our, uh, our next student is Arisa. She's going to play uh, Mendelssohn Concerto, second movement. Okay. Fantastic. Can I start right now? Yes, please do.
gorgeous, beautiful, uh, Ar Ar Arisa. It's so nice to hear you play a, a romantic piece and this, just this piece just bring love and care to to such a trying time. You know, it's wonderful to hear this. It's so romantic and all that stuff. Very, very nice. And now this time, instead of asking you, I just want to tell you a little bit about the concerto and also tell you a little about Mendelssohn. Mendelssohn is as big as a uh, child prodigy as Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart. And also the difference of him is he is from a East German rich family. He is one of the wealthy musicians like Jean Sibelius. Very few musicians are rich. He is one of those very unique, has a very unique family and his sister is a very good pianist and also composer called Fanny Mendelssohn, which is probably the first very early pioneer of female composers. You know. And uh, he wrote this concerto at very late of his life, although called Sailing Late, is he only lived for a short life of 38 years. But he, this is the opus 64. He is really, really mature by then. He wrote all five symphonies. He wrote both piano concertos, both piano trios, multiple string quartets, and uh, some interesting chamber music. And of course, the most famous piece by him is the octet when he wrote, he is only 17 years old. And then um, actually, um, the concert master of the Leip Gwen House, Leipzig Gwen House Orchestra called Ferdinand Davi commissioned this piece and said, uh, I want a piece shows the beauty of the violin and something showy. Um, so Mendelssohn decided to write the first movement at the very first section all on the E string. And also this concerto break a tradition of all the violin concertos or piano concertos, whatever instruments. Usually the cadenza of a concerto is at the end of the first movement, but the cadenza now in the Mendelssohn is in the middle of the movement. Yes? So other concerto you can probably name is Sibelius and Tchaikovsky. You know, the, 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 the cadenza is in the middle of the movement. And also this piece is a very unique thing. It's three movements are linked, the first movement to the second movement to the third movement. So it's not really like stop, turn the page when you have a... Then... Uh... Right? Understand? Okay, now, this particular movement, probably the most important thing I would like to address is first, it, both of them are about vibrato. First is the continuation of vibrato. So vibrato is very important if let's say, let's just say a bird. The bird, when the bird was born, the mother of the bird is teaching the bird learn how to fly. But the flying becomes so natural to the bird. Whenever the bird wakes up, she just flies. She's not like, okay, I'm going to fly for a little bit. I have to, then I stop. Then she's going to be dropped on the ground. But vibrato is something we, as a person, we don't born with that kind of talent, born with that ability. We have to learn it afterwards. So the vibrato, you have to develop, like give me a very short version now. I can talk about that for like two hours, but now I'll give you a short version. Vibrato is emulating a voice because our voice, when we talk, the voice, the word doesn't come out straight. Always have a little oscillation. The words come out like this. So it, there's a, if you see a chart, see a diagram, you will see the oscillation or the wave going back and forth. So vibrato is kind of emulating the voice. Okay, so vibrato has to come from relaxation. The first thing I teach my student, you know, if you want to kind of follow me and do it, is by holding the violin, you put on your bow for a second, put your, um, hit your peg lightly like, with your index finger. Yes, beautiful. Yeah, as long as possible, good. Now move your index finger over the fingerboard and hit your middle finger maybe you it's too hard to hit but just go back and forth yeah enjoying the swing yes beautiful move the second third finger over the middle finger over 
Yes, now it gets a little bit harder. <laughs> good, beautiful. Fourth finger. Yes, yes, good, good. Okay, now, Arisa, let's place your first finger on the A string and be natural. Don't uh, press it too hard and extend your finger, make it straight to all the way straight and come back. Cool, yes. Move up gradually quicker. Increase the speed, decrease the range. So eventually become one spot and back and forth. Fingertip, beautiful. Let's do this again. Extend your finger and come back. And beautiful. Make sure you have a moment. Now, I don't know if you can see my finger knuckle. This is very hard to teach. We're not in the same room. I want to make sure this knuckle bends, okay? It's not just this. Then this is very tight. You want to make sure this knuckle relax. Did you see my knuckle bent? Yes, yours is pretty good. Look, especially the second finger and third finger are all good fingers. <laughs> Fourth finger is really bad. Yeah, second finger. I, I think Arisa is a little tight. I want to make sure it's fully relaxed. I don't know if can you see my elbow going on. Yeah, okay. Now do the second finger, extend far, come back, extend far, come back. And narrow down, narrow down, shorter distance. Beautiful. Yes. Third finger, denatural ascending. Come back. Ascending. Come back. Ascending. Come back. Then eventually one place okay and fourth finger fourth finger now that's a hard one <laughs> right very nice and quicker you see how hard this fourth finger is because you have to right now you are okay so i don't know if your thumb is still there your thumb has to hold it lightly because you have to guide it you don't want the note get out of tune yes it's still there okay good let's stop for a second then what i teach that is this you don't have to follow i just show you i make my student do with a beat with a metronome so i do I do that maybe two octave, you know, first you don't want to deal with intonation and stuff when you go to the higher position, just on the first position, four times per bow, then up bow, octave, two octave, go to get to here, then go down, okay? Then same metronome tempo, same metronome marking, and double the time. So every single beat, your bow has four beats, one, two, three, four. Now I do two times, I do, You probably know what I'm going to go after. I do four times for it. When you do four times, already one thing will come up. I want to make sure you drop your finger with vibrato and you lift your finger from the previous note with vibrato. Because what is happening now is your vibrato is not continuous. Your vibrato you vibrates in the middle of the note. I, I do. I'm, let me do an exaggerated version of yours. You do this. I want. I want it continuous, just like singing, you know? Listen to some good singers, Maria Callas, June Sutherland, 
Renee Flaming, whoever you name it, maybe your own national singer, pop singers or whatever, listen to their vibrato. Okay, usually singers have good vibrato. Of course, you hear some bad singers, the vibrato is so out of focus. Don't listen to those guys. Oh, oh, oh. you don't hear the pitch anymore. That's no good. Okay, now, after that, and four times, two, three, four, then so you do eight. Three. If you do eight, between eight or 16 times, you are pretty much close to what a normal temp, normal speed vibrato will require you to do. Yes, Arisa, it was me. Good. Then, then one more thing I would like you to do. One more thing I'd like to add is, can you develop a vibrato, have different speed? I would love you to do with, The reason why you need to develop that is because music have contour, has shape, you know, has direction. Sometimes it's going forward, sometimes it's going backwards. Okay? For example, this. Probably for me, F is more important than E then A is even more important. The notes get higher. So I want to save the biggest, the most romantic, most large vibrato to the A for the first four measures. And then when the first phrase finishes, I want to decrescendo. I want to reduce the speed and intensity of the vibrato. Let me do once with completely even vibrato. You will hear, you will hear this. Good, right? My vibrato is pretty good, but I feel so there's no freeze, there's no taste, you know. Like if I make pad thai compared to you make pad thai, your is much more authentic than mine. You know, I'm sure your your teacher, you know, I just love love he posts something on pictures, just make me my watery, my, my mouth watery because he's such a great cook. You know, I should have asked him to cook for me when he was in the States, you know, like a sticky and rice and mango. You know, I don't know how to do that. You guys were born with it. You know, it's unbelievable. Now, let me give you a little bit more authenticity with the sound. I hear several highlights is F and A. At the end, I want to have a little decrescendo. The decrescendo can be achieved with lesser vibrato and lesser sound. I'm going to move away from my counterpoint. Now look, this is, I consider, a more musical way of doing it. I don't know, over the internet, over the Zoom, can you hear the difference? Yes, yes, I can hear you. Very nice. Okay, let's, well, we're jumping many, many stages because I, it, it takes like about like, I remember it took me like about like a year to really achieve that because my teacher is really on my case when I was at, at Eastman School of Music doing my doctoral degree, you know, he, he just, on the case every time. But can we try a little bit from the beginning? Because this particular movement is not terribly difficult technically. But in order to achieve that feeling, you have to convey the love and care, make the audience fall in love with this piece. You have to really develop that sensitivity at the fingertip when your vibrato is, and your bow has to change. The sound palette, you know, you have to change the range of sound and imagination has to be really developed and cooked nicely. Okay, can we try it?
Very nice. Hey, Arisa, wonderful. You are such a quick learner. It's already getting better. You know, you're just respond so well with my comments. I want to bring to your attention one more little thing. I want to make sure you understand the vibrato. The highest end of your vibrato is the actual pitch of the vibrato, actual pitch on the page. Right now the vibrato is actually going over the pitch a little bit. So I hear, I hear this. Does this make sense? Can you make sure your vibrato is from the lower end to the actual pitch? Look, this is the pitch, Arisa. This is the pitch. So you go right. You don't go that, right? Do you know what I mean? So this is the pitch and here. Yeah, yeah. So look, listen. No. Too high. This. You want to slide, but the slide cannot be overdone, then it's bad taste. But you don't slide, the shift is going to be jerked. So you want to slide, but not too much. Can I say a conservative romanticism? <laughs> Enjoying that. If you are a singer, you won't do di da di da di ra di ra. Well, call me old fashioned. I'm an old fashioned guy. You know, I listen to all dead violinists. You know, I listen to Chrysler. I listen to Michelle Alman. I listen to Heifetz. I listen to Izai. You know, those people. I really feel they know something. Thirty-eight, uh, eighteen forty-eight. If I'm correct, you know that's his um, birth year and death year. Okay, can we try one more time, please? Yeah. Let me explain you one more thing. It should be a descending line. But all of a sudden, re, la, fa, mi, re. So the fa, re, la, the A, you have to do it on the D string, right? But the D string actually derives from the A string. Your string crossing, if you do this, all of a sudden, your phrase gets this interrupted. That it's not good. Your ear should fear. So, can you hide that string crossing? Really cover it and make it very, very gentle. Yeah. Yes, good. Uh, Arisa. Next time when you cook instant noodle, <laughs> when you cook instant noodle, look the noodle when it's being cooked. It's very soft. It's very gentle. It's very, um, just very small wave there, you know. Uh, Look, I can't play the D here. I can't play the D. Sorry, the angle is not. I can't play the D here. I can't play the D here. I, I'm going to be as close to the D string as possible. You know what I mean? Meanwhile, we'll connect your vibrato. Sorry, we're stuck with the first phrase. Go on for a little bit. <laughs> my, my, my apology. 
Next phrase. Who is a daughter being born four years ago? Teach me so much for my for life. All of a sudden, there's a meaning of making music. It's unbelievable. I don't know how to describe how I feel now, but it's just like all of a sudden, it's not for the sake of playing the violin. I wish you you can feel you are trying to put the baby to sleep. You are you are a uh, 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 singing a crendo song, singing a lullaby here, you know, this is so uh, gentle and also three times so, do mi re si da so, do mi re si da so, do mi so, okay, three times. The reason you do it on the D string the second time, because you want to create some different effect, maybe an echo effect, and third one has a crescendo. So I want to hear more difference with your sound palette. Maybe this one is... this you can vibrate octave equivalent vibrate this then that's the pickup the so next note belongs to the next measure you understand that note doesn't belong it's finished you restart okay hey Arisa uh, again, my apology, but, but I think we achieved something major here is uh, if you can, if you think what I offered is valid, try that vibrato exercise. I think it's very important to develop that uh, sensitivity of vibrato and a combination of fingertip, this knuckle, the wrist, and a little bit arm. But I want to make sure this is kind of an ongoing thing, you know, whenever you play even, you know, even like a fast note, uh, like this. Make sure every single, even 16th notes are vibrating, even this. Uh, even that uh because double spot is much harder to vibrate but at least the melodic note mi, 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 fa, so, fa, la, 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 so, fa, mi. those notes has to have a little color a little sweetness on top yes okay great uh, you're so kind. You haven't really talked much. So do you have any questions, concerns, questions, complaints? <laughs> uh, no, it's not. Great. Okay. Excellent. Arisa, it's so nice to hear you play. That's beautiful. Yeah, keep working on this gorgeous piece and listen to Mendelssohn. Listen to his string quartet. Listen to his piano trio. Listen to his Elijah or oratorio. Just get under the skin of the composer, read about him, you know, and get a fancy, well, this is very expensive. You know, I have this um, this edition by the newest Baron Rider, have two parts. This is the original, unedited, and first edition. Well, look, wait a second. Yeah, my has this first edition, which have different notes in it. And then this is the second edition. This is the second edition here. This is the edition we know. He did a, a major, I even have the manuscript, you know? So the first edition is the manuscript. The manuscript I have is the first edition, okay? So get to know, you know, he, he revised it a year later, you know, Opus 64. I think 
after that, he didn't write that many much music. And then he he passed away. He has a string quartet later, Opus 80 and stuff. But it's very end of his his life. Okay. Bravo. Beautiful. Sure, sure. You're so welcome. Hey, thank you very much. Uh, so if anyone have any questions, please uh, let us know before we end this master class. Uh, anyway, so I, I would like to thank you, Dr. Her, for being so kind and agreeing to give us uh, a master class. And it was really helpful. There were so many things we can uh, take away and practice and uh, develop ourselves. And uh, thank you for the technology that made this possible. Otherwise, we would have you have, we would have to fly you here. But this is something. Of course, it's not ideal, but I think it's something that we can continue and uh take advantage of because it's so convenient yes totally yeah i'm very grateful for this this uh, otherwise last year will be like unsinkable i don't know what to do you know because we're not allowed to see the students students are scared we are scared especially i have a family you know i'm so grateful you know as i said you know it can never replace face to face because sometimes you have to let the you have to touch the arm or let the student touch the arm to feel how relaxed you are or how how intense you are but you know this is the second best you know mm -hmm. thanks to modern technology we're, we're living in a in a society which is really blessed by by modern yes. technologies it's amazing so but everybody stay safe be very careful you know wear your mask you know if you I don't know if you guys have your vaccination yet because we are had the opportunity not, not yet right no, no. That might take, yeah, well, because the vaccination is not available in Thai, you have to like import them from some other country or what's going on? Yes, yeah. yes, we have to import them. And there's uh, some kind of government restrictions holding those imports. Yes, but hopefully we'll get right, it right. eventually. Right. Yeah, hopefully, hopefully. Just be careful. No, no party. <laughs> Just... If you want to party really hard a year later, don't party at all now. You know, I, I sometimes you know, tell my students they they work too hard. They're like, oh, my hand hurts. I will say, okay, please don't come today. You know, relax. If you want to play your, the rest of your life, you want to continue playing the violin, be a violinist, you have to stop playing now. You know, that's for, for the later because you save your hand, save your energy level and all that stuff. So that's true. <laughs> that's really true. Like, like, like to push too hard. But anyway, that's that's wonderful to hear all your three students, you know, well taught and wonderful, very receptive. That's excellent, Jay. Excellent. Thank you for the opportunity. Yes. And wonderful much. to see you. Yeah, 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 definitely. Okay, Great. so maybe we'll see each other again in the future. Sure, sure. But when they sign off, let me talk to you for one minute and two, you know, if, okay, if they, sure, they sure, don't sure. have. Then now I'll kick everyone out. You don't have to kick them, just tell them, you know, maybe. Okay, so uh, the master class is officially finished. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you. Excellent. Okay, yes, everyone is gone. Sure, definitely. So, so I, um, Again, no, 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 no. It's 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 wonderful. You know, I I I feel like I'm some sort of useful person. Otherwise, at home, just just babysit my daughter. You know, don't, I, I don't practice. I don't have time to practice. You know, as soon as pick mm -hmm. up the violin, she needs to the bathroom. Or she needs something. You know, I just I'm so glad something. Hopefully, it's useful for them. And I did take a few pictures. I can send it to you or or whatever. If if you That's you right. want me to post post or whatever, I can post. Feel free to include that poster when you post something. Uh -huh. You know, whatever. So uh, uh -huh. yeah. I did yeah. record the whole master class, and uh -huh. I'll, I think I'll make a short video. You know, putting this bits and bits and put it together and include in a poster and maybe from from, from uh, with your pictures that you took and with the poster and, and I will tag you on Facebook too, but maybe later tonight or, or tomorrow because uh, I have a lot of work to do. Take your time. There's there's no pressure whatsoever. Make sure whatever I talk mean or looking like horrible, just cut that portion of it. <laughs> okay, okay, no problem, no problem. You were you you were great. You were great. And my uh, some of the students they texted me that they really liked the master class. Just um, and, and they were really happy to at least have someone, even though it's online, but right. it's better than nothing. 
any time, you know, any time. And uh, of course, no string attached. I'm very happy. If you they think it's helpful, whatever. I feel we are all servants of music. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. whatever I hear them play, they provoke me of thinking how to help them. Actually, I'm learning from them in a way. So that's that's no problem. If next semester you want me to teach again, I'll be more than happy to. No problem. That's you great. know. Uh, and uh, tell them if they're interested, let's say we can create some sort of pipeline because you were studying with Paris, you know, mm -hmm. and then you and the Paris was a student of Aspen, you were a student of Aspen, you know, if they're interested in coming, of course, right now it's a little bit tricky, but hopefully eventually we'll open the door again, you know, it's it's easier to travel. They are I'm more than happy to, you know, take them, you know, if, if they're mm -hmm. interested in are aspired to come to the state to to study, you know, definitely. So, definitely. So, there's an option also summer festival, you know, Aspen teaches in Aspen Music Festival. I'm teaching as money. If they cannot come as a regular year, maybe during the summer, they want to have a summer experience. Also, it's an option as well too. Yes, right? okay, definitely. Cause I, I, I told them like, please come to the master class. Even though you're not playing, you should come because maybe, you know, if you would like to continue your study, this is your uh, options. Cause this exactly. is exactly considered. Yes, exactly. so. Exactly. Yeah, especially if you start to know people, you, you study with several different teachers, you went to a summer festival, you can, yeah, I mean, you, Jay, you can invite different people to give them mass class, give them different perspective, perspective, because last whole year, I'm like, well, how can I get my student engaged? Because they hear me tell them the same thing every single lesson, either remotely or face to face. So every single studio class on Monday at 12, 30, you know, that's the universal time, you know, here at the Aspen also teaches then. So I usually first four weeks, I need to get them ready. First four weeks, no. From the week five until like week 14, every single week is a different master, different teacher. It's very good. Some teacher is very straight. Some teacher is very uh, relaxed. Some people is solely untechnical. Some people is very musical. Some people are good combination of both. Some is bad combination of nothing. You know, it's very interesting to see how everybody teaches some very, you know, mm -hmm. yes, you know, dry. And some people is very flattering. I'm learning a lot from, you know, yes, it's I'm for myself, which reason I learn a lot from those guys, you know, so why not? You know, it's, it's a, the platform is right there. It just, the only thing you need to suffer is I just go to bed a little later. They have to wake up a little earlier. You know, that's the problem with Asian time, you know, but other than that, that's, it's just fine. Yeah. Great. Yes. So like, uh, uh, I have already invited Espen. So it's going to do this kind of master class next month. Probably maybe around mid June or the end of June. I'm still Perfect. figuring out the date. Yes, and I would like to continue this this kind of online master classes. Yes, like because I was inspired by you because I see you post every almost every week that you okay invite this teacher invite that teacher. I think you know I, I, I'd like to follow that kind of path you're taking. Yes, because in a way. You even invite somebody who you don't know. I doubt it, unless they're terribly busy. So they're going to charge you like an astronomical fee. Then you just turn them down. You say, well, we don't have money. You know, most people yes. are pretty friendly. You know, they are very happy. Actually, in a way, it stimulates to do something. Otherwise, they're just sitting there as a couch potato. That's not good. You know, right. so they'll be very happy to hear their expertise. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. How, by the way, how is Paris doing? I haven't seen him for like years. Uh, he's he's doing great. He's uh he's teaching here as well, and because of right now it's a semester break, so nothing's going on. So, but maybe you know, like when we do master class with uh, Espen, maybe Paris will jump in and talk a little bit. Hopefully, sounds great. Right. Okay. It, whenever you invite Espen, let me know. If I'm free, I would love to see. You know, that's that's mm -hmm. great. It's well, continue our LSU connection. Why not? You know, yes, yes, that's great. Okay. okay. But thank you so much for uh, doing this for us. I'm, I'm, I'm really, so really happy and grateful. Yes, totally. Uh, Jay, I, I will send you the picture through the email or should I send it to instant message from Facebook or what? Anything. You can email me. That's fine. Okay. Yes. Definitely. Thank you so much. Definitely. Yes. We'll talk soon. We'll talk soon. Bye bye. Have a good day. Bye. Thank you.